Okay, so now we're going to get to fabricating the forward system, or the front hoops, or the forward hoops, or the front section, whichever one you want to use as far as terminology is concerned, as long as we're talking about this area up front, forward of the main hoop. Now, fabricating these is not that difficult to do, or even measuring and bending them is pretty simple too, compared to like the main hoop, for example. That was probably one of the hardest pieces to make. So, there are a few things that you need to pay attention to, though. Now, you're going to pay attention to the type of racing or the class of racing or sanction that you're running with and that you are within their design parameters and what they allow and do not allow for use on the, on the forward system. So, in the case of GTA and RTA, there are three different designs that we're allowed to use. The first one is using two separate forward hoops. They start at the main hoop run along the roof line, down the A-pillars, and then down to the floor. There's one on each side with a windshield bar connecting the two of them. The second one's called a halo system. Uh, the halo system starts at the main hoop, runs along the roof line, goes across the windshield, back along the roof line, and connects again to the other side of the main hoop. Then there are two separate tubes that run down the A-pillar and then down to the floor. The third one is called a forward hoop or a front hoop, and that starts at the floor, runs along the A-pillar, goes across the windshield, back down the A-pillar, and then down to the floor again. It's very rare that I use a front hoop, okay? And the reason why is because at the radius of the bend, when it gets up to the top here, can and often sometimes does obstruct the driver's field of view. I don't care to use that very much. So the other option here, or the other reason why, is because uh, oftentimes you have a small car like this or a semi-complicated chassis to work with, uh, it makes it very difficult to get the entire hoop in here slid into the, the through the dash and whatnot and get it all set up and record, you know, you know, made correctly or fit correctly. So you take the chance of damaging the dash and whatnot, and that's not something I usually like to take the chance of doing. The Halo system I use frequently, uh, not as frequently as the first system mentioned, but the, the Halo system comes in handy when you have a difficult angle to achieve or you're going to put too many bends in your uh, forward hoops. So the design basically, if you have a roof line that is a very streamlined design and the roof line actually goes upward a little bit or bends upward before it goes down the A pillars, then usually you want to run the Halo design to ease your fabrication and make it a lot quicker and whatnot. So I don't use it very much, but I've used it before and that's uh, it's kind of a the only way to get around that really streamlined design. So this one is going to use just the two separate forward hoops. It's pretty much the easiest thing to do and uh, I like the design better and there's less obstruction in the driver's field of view. So in order to do that, to get set up, we're going to find out roughly how much material we need. So I'm going to start by measuring from the main hoop to roughly where the first bend needs to be. That's about two feet. And we'll measure to the second section here, about four feet. We'll measure from the floor to roughly where that one was before. We're at 27 inches, so two feet, three inches. Now I need to figure out roughly where the first bend is gonna land. So I'm just gonna use some tape and a marker here. And I recall where that first two foot mark was. And I'm gonna guess, and you know, somewhere about in here is about 12 inches away. I'm gonna put another piece of tape right there. Because half of six feet is three feet, or 36 inches. And I mentioned before, it's a lot easier to work from the center of the tube outward to get your bends, or at least a, a bend in a tube where you only have two separate bends. In this case, it'll be a lot easier. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of excess and start on the outside of the main hoop on my measurement. Here's a 24 inch mark, it's about right there. I'm gonna add 12 inches to it. And right here is the center of our six foot two. So first I'm gonna place the cheater bar uh, with the notch on the inside indicating the beginning of the bend. Make sure that faces the center of the tube, which is this mark right here. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this, to say about where I want my bend to go. And I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna have the bend go kind of high and tuck it up in here to keep it out of the way of the driver's head because we don't want any contact with the driver. So uh, I'd like it to start up here. And we'll make it reach up to the main hoop there and that actually lands right about right where my 24 inch mark is so i'm going to make the start of the bend at 24 inches or 12 inches from the center and leave 24 inches to go to the main hoop so that one's actually pretty easy so that'll be the start of the first bend now we're going to set this up and kind of eyeball it again to the area where it's going to pass through the dash and make sure that you give yourself enough wiggle room in there 
And I'm going to take the tape measure here. And from the beginning of the bend to the center tube mark, looks like eight inches. So we got eight inches from the center to the downward bend that goes through the dash and 12 inches from the center to the upper bend where it heads to the main hoop. Those two measurements, that's all we need to know right now, except for the angles. We need to know what degree they need to be bent at. So if you notice here, the roof line does kind of gradually slope down just a little bit. So that we need to figure out what angle that sits at. So I'm gonna place the protractor up here and that looks about 10 degrees. And then we need to find out what angle the A-pillar sits at. That angle rests at 30 degrees. So what we're going to do is take 30 degree angle here, subtract the 10 degree angle here, and this first bend is going to be 20 degrees. Okay. Now, since the position of the lower section of the tube is going to be actually offset or further outward than the upper section or the, where it meets the main hoop, we have to calculate and figure out the offset bend. Now, offset it to easily explain this is if you look at your A-pillar at this angle where I'm at right here, you'll notice that it comes inward only slightly. Now, that creates an offset. What that means is when the tube comes down, it has to bend at the correct 20 degree angle here, but also needs to go slightly outward. And instead of putting two separate bends in there, we're just going to put one and we're going to offset the second bend to go in the direction that it needs to go in. So, first we need to figure out what that's going to be. Now the best way to do this is to take your protractor, hold it at 90 degrees, and then turn it inward to the point where it just starts touching the A-pillar. And Now we have a 10 degree offset. So we'll notice that when we set it up, and if we hold the, the tube perfectly straight, we'll see that it's going to bend inward and then bend straight back toward the main hoop. That's going to be the offset. So. We know that this is 20 degrees up here. We know we have a 10 degree offset. And since the lower section of the tube has to be parallel with the main hoop, in a perfect world, we'd have a 70 degree bend that goes down through the dashboard. I need a little bit of wiggle room. We need to have a you know, bit of placement, change of design, whatever the case is. So I'm gonna go a little bit less than the 70 degree mark. I'm gonna actually start at 60 degrees because with the marking on the tube, we can always bend it a little bit further if we need to, but you can't unbend a bend. So, to be on the safe side, we're going to start with 60 degrees down here, 20 degrees up here, 10 degree offset, 6 foot tube, let's get to cutting. Okay, so we're using the same material as we did before, which is the inch and a half, 120 wall, DOM. As the rule states, it all must be the same. This is a 12 foot stick that I already had cut down when I purchased the tubing. And we're going to cut it right at 6 feet, so that means this one tube right here will serve as both sides. So we'll just get this cut out real quick. So I've already cut both tubes. They're both six feet long. And usually I would mark them out both the same since they're going to be identical on both sides. The only difference is going to be the offset angle when we feed it into the bender. And I'll show you that in just a second. So, But for the purpose of simplifying everything, I'm just going to mark this one tube here. Now, again, you can mark both of them at the exact same time if you're excellent with multitasking. So the center of the tube, 6 feet, is 36 inches, or 3 feet. And the first bend, uh, that goes up toward the main hoop was 12 inches away from that. So I'm going to mark this 48 inches. And we know this bend was 20 degrees. So we'll write that down. Now the other bend toward the bottom was 8 inches away from the center of the tube. So we we'll go down to 28 inches. Mark this out. So remember I said I wanted to put a little bit less of a bend on it, so I'm going to mark this down as 60 degrees instead of the 70 degrees that we need before. And I'll show you probably why that's going to end up needing to be that way in just a moment. So now that we get these marks out, let's feed this into the bender. Once again, I'm going to line this up with this beginning of my bend, that initial bending line mark that we put in there. Set that up correctly right at the start of the die. I'm going to crank this down. Now this one is at 70 degrees. That's the bend that we need to make, so crank it up to 70. Now let's figure out our offsetting. 
So what we've done so far is we've thrown it into the die, set the marking up exactly where it needs to be, and I've tightened it down just enough to give me a little bit of twisting and turning room here, okay? So don't get yourself too wrapped up about this and try to figure out which way it's gotta go because you know one tube is gonna have to bend left and the other one's gonna have to bend right. So that translates to this leg's gonna be up or this leg's either gonna be down. Now you can sit there and try to figure it out, which I have and I know that this tube, in order for it to fit on the right side, is gonna have to bend downward because the bend starting from the bottom is gonna bend left. That translates to down inside the die. So let's set this up, bent downward, which means it's gonna bend left, and set that at 10 degrees. Okay. Now you also wanna make sure that your die is set up correctly and you are reading zero degrees, which in this case I am. So I'm gonna double check again. Sure, I'm on 10 degrees. Crank it down. Check again just to make sure. And then really tighten it. I'm also going to double check that I'm still on my line at the die, which I am. So now we crank it down. All right, now we've set up the passenger side too, which in this case, if it was a left-hand drive, it would be your driver's side. Well, I'll just actually just call it the left side tube. So remember the right side tube, we ended up bending downward to compensate for our offset angle. So this being the opposite side, this one's gonna have to go upward. So, twist it, set at 10 degrees. Crank that down. Now, of course, again, I'm going to check, make sure that my line is still on the die, which again, it is. Check that I'm on zero, which I am. 10 degrees there. We're good to go. Now, this is a correctly bent offset tube. Notice how the base of it is actually more towards the right than the left of it as you're looking down the tube. That is an offset angle. I've thought long and hard about how I'm gonna approach this one. And uh, the reason why is because I know a lot of the purists are gonna start jumping onto the comments box there and going nuts on me because uh, this is a legit, real Evo 6 RS TME. And uh, I'm about ready to take a saw to it. <laughs> so to clearly explain real quick, this is exactly what's gonna happen. The tube has to go in through the dash, through the AC vent section, and at this point right here, it's getting in the way. So it has to go away. And the only way to make it go away is to use one of these. The rule book says that uh, all of the pieces, panels, dash, door cards, uh, center console, all of those must remain intact uh, unless you they interfere with the installation. So you can modify any one of those pieces aforementioned uh, to facilitate the installation of the roll cage which is exactly what I'm going to do. So if you are one of those purists, uh, you know, hey, I'm sorry, but race car. We'll take a moment of silence. All right, I got to go to the other side. Now I'm just kind of positioning the main hoop here. I did drop it down so I can slide the tube above it and I can make my marks for the notching. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I have it smartly aligned with this upper roof rib that I said I was gonna made it up to earlier and that's what we're basing all of our measurements off of. So I just use a, one of my holding magnets here and kind of get it in place. I want to make sure that both sides match up evenly that they're both even on the floor as well. Sometimes this takes a little bit of uh, this kind of encouragement to get it to uh, line up correctly. So now that I've got it roughly where it needs to be, I'm gonna go grab another tube and we're gonna feed it over there and start making our marks.
Okay, so this really is just kind of a, a guess. You gotta loosely eyeball it to see where you're going with it, but take our marker, we'll make my face line. And then we'll have our throat line. Now we'll go make our cuts. All right. Front bars are in place. So here's the thing. One thing you have to note when you actually place your bars up top is how you're going to weld them as soon as, uh, as soon as it's time to completely weld all the way around. You might notice that the torch isn't going to really fit back there. So positioning of the bars on the main hoop is actually very, very important. And it is the case when uh, you remove the blocks. Right now I have some, some wood holding everything up in place. When you remove those blocks, the cage has to drop down and that's how you'll access those areas to weld them. So in this case, I have a four inch block below. So if I drop this four inches, I'll be able to access it right here in the door jam. So just so for future reference there, so you know. What I'm gonna do now is put down as much weld as possible on these tubes. And then we're gonna start fabricating the windshield bar and of course the roof bar.